Today we go get education on cancer. Make we listen attentively. Yes, doctor. Over to you, sir. Good morning, honorary president. Mm. Good morning, Bereket family. I'm happy to be here today again. Uh, honorary president, yes, just sir. to um, remind you what you told me. Was it on Tuesday when you called me? Mm. You said I should talk about breast cancer. Breast cancer. Okay, so that's different from talking about cancer. Okay. Yeah, because if I talk about cancer, we will not live here today, even just introduction, mm. because there are different types of cancer. Okay, breast cancer. So I will zero in on breast cancer. Okay. Thank you now, so much. Now, before you start, yeah. I, will, I will ask you some questions where you go put for your pocket. In the course of the program, you go take idea, attend to them. Number one, they talk, say, cancer. They know up till now, science never discover what will be the major cause of cancer. One. Number two, breast cancer. Now only woman, they get breast cancer. I'll be a man, they get breast, ca breast cancer. Number three, they talk, say, he gets some fr fruits when they say, if you they take them, then they fight cancer. Uh, most especially stage one, stage two cancer. This is not the question. Will be foundation question. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for all those questions. In fact, most of the answers are embedded in the body of the presentation. Okay, so cancer is defined as abnormal growth of cells within the body. You see, every human being that came into this world came into this world through two cells. One from the mother, that is the ovum, then or the egg, and one from the father, that is the sperm. When they come together, they fuse and they begin to grow, they multiply. And by multiplying, it gets bigger and bigger. You have the human being formed. And then the, the cells begin to differentiate into different organs and they will continue to grow. But that growth is controlled, otherwise, Human beings will continue to grow. They will grow bigger than elephant and grow bigger than whale and, and just continue to grow. But there is a regulatory process in the body that controls that growth. It regulates the rate of division of the cells. It also controls the size of the cell. But when that regulation is lost, the cells begin to multiply anyhow. Instead of a cell dividing every month, it can even divide like 20 times a day. Yes, so what you are going to have is a mass of cells. And most of the time, the cells are useless. And they compete with the normal cells for nutrients. They cause pressure on the normal tissue. And they, they um, distort the whole normal tissue architecture. And that, those are the things that are responsible for many of the symptoms that we have or that patients experience when they have cancer. So coming down to breast cancer, so it's abnormal uh, cells, abnormal growth of cells within the breast tissue. Just the way we have uh, cancer of the breast, we have cancer of the prostate, we have cancer of the eye, we have cancer of the intestine. So there are thousands of cancers that are possible within the body. But for today, we are looking at the breast. So how big is this problem? It's very big. Because breast cancer is the commonest cancer in the world. 2.3 million new cases of breast cancer was diagnosed in 2020 alone. 2.2 million cases of cancer and 685,000 people died from breast cancer in that year in only one year that's that's a massive number of people that died from you know looking at the, the figures so who are the people in, uh, that breast cancer affect it affects women more than 
it affects men, but it affects men. So let's say about 10% of cases or less are men, but over 90% are women. Now, ordinary president was talking about men that are behaving like women, you know, earlier on. But some, some, especially in the West, some men have gone the extra mile, the extra length, not just behaving like women. They actually sign for doctors to change them to women. We call them the transgender women, which means they were men before, and they have now, they now have breasts. Some of them have hips, and some many of them talk like women. And they actually look like women. You may never be able to differentiate them from from natal. We call them natal women or natal. Natal means that's the sex that you were born with. Those people, those men who were men before and they changed to women, their risk of having breast cancer is much higher than in normal men that they were before uh, before they changed because. All these things involve hormones. They pump hormones into their bodies, and so they become more predisposed to uh, cancer. The lifetime risk of a woman developing breast cancer is one in eight. If one, if uh, ten girls are born today, and you follow them through till the the, the end of their lives. Out of every um, eight, one of them is likely to have cancer in their lifetime. So it's, it's, it's quite common, you know. So having known this about breast cancer, I want to find out what might be the causes of breast cancer. There are a few cancers in the body that you know the exact cause, or you, you know the predisposition, or you know there's a strong link. But in breast cancer, we talk about risk factors. What are the risk factors of breast cancer? The number one risk factor of a person developing breast cancer is the fact that she's a woman. The day you were born as a woman, your chances of having breast cancer is higher than that of a man. So being female is a risk factor. Then also, increasing age. It's not common to have breast cancer in less than 30 years of age. Even though recently we, have begun, we are beginning to see breast cancer in young women, and it's really disturbing. But commonly, it's from f late 40s into 50s, 60s, and 70s that we have uh, breast cancer being common. And then also... Um, family history is very important. If someone, someone's mother has died of breast or has been diagnosed with breast cancer as a woman, there's a, there's a, um, a, a high risk of that girl developing breast cancer in the future. We talk about first degree relative. If someone's daughter has had breast cancer, the mother can also be at higher risk. Yes, because it's not only from um, old age down, it can be the reverse. If someone is 35 and he developed breast cancer, his mother, her mother who is 60, should also watch it because it can equally happen to her. Yes. Then the age at Menake. Menake means the first menstruation. Okay, so the younger the girl when she first when she had her first menstruation, the higher the chances of getting breast cancer in the future. Because she's exposed to a lot of hormones for many years. And then nulliparity. Women who did not give birth at all, they are known to have higher risk of breast cancer than um, women that have many children. Then there's what we call hormone replacement therapy. For women who have 
hit menopause, their their women hormone, the estrogen, has become very low or not existent. Many of them experience a lot of complaints like hot flushes, anxiety, body pain, you know, different things. And if we replace that hormone that is lacking and we give them the hormone replacement that will make them fresh again and stable, though it has its own benefit in that it reduces the symptoms of, of menopause, but on the other hand, it can have... Um, it can increase the risk of breast cancer. Smoking is known to increase breast cancer risk. Alcohol consumption, f obesity. Women who are fat of be on the big obese side, they have a higher risk of developing breast cancer and other breast conditions like benign lump. Because it's not every it's not every swelling in the breast that is breast cancer. So let's talk about the diagnosis. How do we know that um, a woman or a person has breast cancer? And this is very important. And I think that women should listen because after a lecture like this, some if some points are not made clear, some women become anxious and very little things they are worried, oh, doctor, do I have cancer? Okay, so um, I will explain that. Sorry, for those people where they watch us all over the world, um, when I go to see some of the images where, where they show, it's for educational purposes. Um, so that uh, people go see within doctor they describe with mouth. I don't know whether I want to understand. So I beg, uh, no offense uh, is intended. And then if you no fit watch, no look. Just uh, hear the voice. I beg. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ordinary presence, uh, with your permission, I would advise that they leave the picture first so that it okay. doesn't distract the Leave lecture. the pictures. When, um, when I've done a lot of explanation, I will okay. now speak to each of the okay. pictures. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. So the presenting complaint is what brought the woman to the hospital. Um, most of the time in this environment, um, women, the the uh, women's cancer have the breast cancer has already gone advanced mm. before they come. So they come with oh my breast is big or uh, there's sore in my breast or I felt a lump in my breast. But in advanced world, because of the screening programs that they have, so breast cancer is picked up much earlier, and so they live longer with the disease. So if the cancer is uh, big enough to get an average woman's attention, it's probably late. So that's why screening program is important, and I will talk about cancer it. Cancer get cure, be you not get cure. There are some cancers that have cure, but breast cancer does not have. Okay, breast cancer get cure, I be you no get cure. It doesn't have a cure, but we can attain, um, we can get to a certain level where you say after 10 years, if you take out the breast, after 10 years, it doesn't come back. We can assume a cure, but generally, we don't, we don't talk of cure. We talk about survival. We talk about one year survival, five year survival, 10 year survival. After 10 years survival and no stress of cancer, most people may not have it again. But even after that, sometimes it can just come from somewhere. Is it normal for a woman's one breast to be bigger than one? Is it normal, naturally? Yes, it's normal. Okay, so yes. continue, sir. Yes, thank you. So a breast lump, sometimes when you are taking your bath, you just feel something abnormal in the breast. Maybe one of the, one of the breasts. And it's, it could be hard, it could be firm, but you, you know that this is it wasn't not there. It wasn't there all along. That's a warning sign. But I want to also emphasize again that 85% of breast lump will not be cancer. So the fact that you felt a breast lump, it doesn't mean that it's cancer. Most breast lumps are benign, they are innocent. 
Okay? So, breast lump, sometimes we have ulcer. There's a sore on the breast. Sometimes there's a swelling in the armpit, the lymph node. That's a bad sign. If there's already a swelling in the armpit from the breast cancer, that means it has spread to the armpit. So that's a late stage. Then sometimes you just have a dimple on the skin. Innocent looking. Just the way we have dimple in our cheek. On our cheek. You have a dimple. There's a puckering of the skin. The skin is, is uh, tucked in. And that might just be the only um, sign that the woman brings. Especially if she lifts up her two hands like this, you know, the skin of one of the breasts would, would go inside. So that's one of the signs. Then uh, there could be swelling. The, the One of the breasts might be swollen, bigger than what it used to be. Yes, generally in most women, one breast is bigger than the other. But every woman knows what is normal for her over the years but by the time one breast is swollen then it's a it's a red flag then there could be nipple discharge the nipple discharge could be whitish discharge it could be watery discharge it could be bloody discharge but anything that is coming from the nipple when you are if if you are not breastfeeding and um, there's a whitish discharge from it then it needs to be evaluated by the doctor. Then sometimes there's what we call nipple retraction. The nipple is supposed to be out, but when the nipple now is tucked in, I'll show you the picture with time, then that's also a red flag that we might be dealing with cancer. So after all these uh, this, uh, symptoms or this complaint, as the doctor want to take the history. How long has this thing been? Is this mass, is it painful or not? Has it been increasing in size? Is there discharge when you press it? Is it painful? And stuff like that. Then you take family history. Uh, you want to find out who in the family has had similar thing. Not just breast cancer. If someone else has had another type of cancer, maybe cancer of the womb, then, then the family members, first degree relatives, are also predisposed to having cancer of the breast. Then you want to take the gynecological history. When was the first time of menstruation? Um, how many children does the woman have? And you, know, you also want to find out um, the, if there are other cancers, that same person, if he has had other cancers, too. Then we examine the breast. In examining the breast, you examine both breasts, and you check for the mass and characterize the mass, check the lymph node. Then some, it's very common for doctors to examine the abdomen, examine other parts of the body when he's actually when the complaint is that of breast, because you want to be sure that it has not spread to the other parts of the body. Then you investigate. You do a full blood count. You want to check the kidney function test. You want to check the chest x-ray, because breast cancer can spread to the lungs, and it can be seen on chest x-ray. Then CT scan is, is very important. We do CT scan of the brain, CT scan of the chest, CT scan of the abdomen and the pelvis. All that is to check for spread. Then the most, the single most important investigation that you want to do for a suspected breast cancer is biopsy. Biopsy means you are going in there to take a little tissue out of the mass, out of the swelling, and then to look at it under the microscope, histology. That's what will confirm the diagnosis. This is useful clinically. It's also useful medical legally. Yeah, because 
without a tissue diagnosis, you can't give definitive treatment in case it will require removal of the, the mass or removal of the breast. Because if you take out a woman's breast without a tissue diagnosis, you can be sued as a doctor. And if it is proven that it is not breast cancer, that can be a problem. It's a problem for the patient because you just removed it unnecessarily. So biopsy is very important. That biopsy would, first of all, one, confirm that what we are dealing with is breast cancer. Secondly, it will confirm the behavior of the breast cancer. Is it hormone? Uh, uh, does it have receptors? There's what we call estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors and some others like HER2. So those, if those things are there, it affects the kind of treatment you want to give to the patient after you have done the surgery. I'm sure you, some of us know about um, a lady called Angelina Jolie. Yes, she's a movie star. Her auntie was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was in the, it's in the family. She went to do the genetic test. And they said it's in her gene. That means that there's a very high chance that she will have breast cancer. She submitted herself to the doctors without breast cancer. He said, take out my breasts. And so they did prophylactic mastectomy. They removed the breasts because she doesn't want to hear that one day she woke up with breast cancer. And by the time that happens, it's probably late. She's fighting from a disadvantaged position. So that's why she submitted herself for that. And in any case, with modern surgical technique, she got a new, a brand new set of breasts. And it's even said that the, the prosthetic breasts, the, the new breasts are even more beautiful than the ones that she removes. So nothing is lost. I'm saying this because I've lost a lot of, a number of patients, women, who say that they would rather die than to have their breasts removed. And that's actually the, the best option of treatment. And they, they actually died and they left their children. You know, so perspective matter, understanding matter and everything. So how do you, after you have um, attained your diagnosis through biopsy, then you now stage the disease. You've heard that, you've heard people talk about, oh, advanced stage, early stage. Yes, so we have different stages, stage one, stage zero, stage one, stage two, stage three. Stage four is the most advanced stage. It means the cancer has spread. It has spread to distant organs. Common places where the cancer likes to spread to is the lungs. Yesterday, I had to drain um, fluid from a patient who was having difficulty in breathing. Yes, because of what we are talking about. And it's common. I do it every time. Because now the cancer it, itself is not as much of a problem as the complications. That follows. Yes. Sometimes, you know, people suffer a lot of pains from the cancer because it penetrates the nerves. When it infiltrates the nerves, it causes a lot of pain. It puts a lot of pressure on the organs around. It causes a lot of pain. So the, the spread of the cancer to the brain, some people will just, some women will just go unconscious and they may mm -hmm. never, yes. Once the cancer spread to the brain, they may never recover from it. It's, if it goes to the liver, you find after it, it destroys quite a large uh, volume Percentage. of the liver, you see yellow eyes, jaundice, and then swollen stomach. Before you know it, that's it. So then sometimes some women who have breast cancer, they just get paralyzed because the cancer has spread to the spinal cord. Yes, so from, from that point down, 
they are not able to move. So these are some of the areas the you know the the cancer spread to. So that's the the essence of staging. That you want to stage to know whether the cancer is localized. Is it still in the breast? Or has it moved out of the breast? If it has moved out of the breast, how far has it gone? Most of the time, the first place it goes to is the lymph nodes in the armpit. Then from there, it spreads to the liver and the other areas. So after you have staged, then you now plan treatment. Most of the time, surgery is involved in the treatment. But it depends on the stage. And what is the goal of treatment? The goal of treatment also depends on the stage. If a woman comes with a breast cancer that is already fungating and it's open, big sore and smelling, so the aim is not treat, is not um, cure, because you you can't cure that kind of. So what we do is toilet mastectomy. You are going to take out the breast, mm -hmm. but the whole idea is to for her to be comfortable you know you remove the breast and and clean up the area and so she she feels a lot better and the burden of the disease will also be less okay so for for the early stage we are we 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 aim at cure you can take out the the tumor if it is very small take out the cancer area with some normal tissue around it we call it breast conservatives breast conservation surgery so you can still have surgery in breast cancer without removing the breast but if the size of the tumor is big and the breast is relatively small breast conservation is not possible so the best thing is to take out the breast taking out the breast also has different levels there are some that's radical surgery where you take out the breast take out the tissues below clear all the armpits you know and, and move everything out and then after that we will now do chemotherapy the essence of the chemotherapy is to kill the cells that cannot be seen by the by the eyes they or they are probably already trans on their way to the liver or already on their way to the brain or other parts of the body so the chemotherapy goes after those microscopic cells that are you know already moving to distant sites and then of course radiotherapy radiotherapy is useful to kill the cancers around the bed around the area where the where the tumor was removed or where the breast was removed or if the patient already has metastatic deposit like for instance if the tumor has already spread to the spinal cord and the woman is having weakness you can irradiate that part of the spinal cord and it can kill the cancer cells around there and the the, 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 the there can be a, a significant improvement in that sometimes when the tumor spread to the brain it you, you may have to do a brain surgery to take out if it is just one big tumor there you take you open the brain and remove the the tumor and a lot of them still do well so after um before this the before the surgery you actually are supposed to counsel the patient and explain everything you know what you want to do and all that what's the prognosis if the cancer is detected early most women would live to be i mean five years survival is very high about 85 to 90 percent of women will be alive in five years and the higher the number of years you are counting from diagnosis the less the percentage of women that will be alive but in places where everything is working about 60 percent of women will still be alive by 10 years the truth is when cancer is diagnosed it's now a fight for life that's why we talk about survivors yes because we want to know how many people are going to survive this you know and it requires a lot of financial resources it requires a lot of psychological support it requires a lot of family support so 
what is since early detection early uh, presentation is the key to a uh, good outcome so how do you make sure that you find this cancer early before it's too late and that's where screening comes in screening means that you are detecting a disease before the symptom shows up so if a disease is in the body and you have a way of detecting that that disease is in the body even before it before it shows sign that's screening okay so how do you screen for breast cancer one of the ways is mammography for women 40 years and above it's advisable that you do mammography once in a year some once in two years that mammography can pick up early signs in the breast if there are changes they'll, qu they'll quickly detect it and send you to the doctor to to the surgeon who looks at it and do a biopsy if it is cancer at that stage then treatment can be commenced and most women at that stage just the very early stage can live their normal lives you know but if of course you are waiting until you feel the swelling or the skin is broken then it's already late then breast self examination is very important it's also a screening me me method women are advised to examine their breasts every morning when they go to the shower every day every day just and it's not more than two minutes and and it can be life-saving either when you're in the bathroom or when you stand before the mirror you 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 are looking at yourself in the mirror you look at the 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 two breasts and you look at the nipples look at the shape look at has there been any changes Daisy Wakawa, good morning, Breketa family. Please, I need help. My mom has breast cancer, and we don't have funds to run tests on her. She's lost weight, heavy lumps in her armpit, very bad discharge. We don't know what to do. Hmm. Can you please uh, put um, DM me? your phone number so i can call you back please or you send me a message to send a message to our whatsapp uh what whatsapp number please continue sir. sorry for interrupting thank you sir, you, sir. so after when you after your the initial observation so if you notice any of the uh, maybe at this time i can we can look at the pictures okay yes please can we scroll your discretion is highly advised in fact not only advised but highly recommended thank you go ahead okay show that the, first picture. Show the picture so that picture is showing redness around the nipple and up there you see on the top part of it uh, just above the nipple there's a small swelling there that as innocent looking as it is is a danger sign once you see something like that start running because there, there's cancer underneath hmm. next try next slide so this is what we call peel de orange, the skin of an orange. It's a French word that is, is, trans, is translated the skin of orange. This skin of, or if you you know your normal skin is not like this. If you see something like this, that is breast cancer. Yes, when you see that the the skin, okay, exactly these two. You see that there's there are. Uh, um, dimples what is it dimples you know those um dots like the orange skin you know how the orange skin is exactly when the breast now becomes looks like the skin of an orange then that's a danger sign it might be breast cancer no near ego is a please doctor my mother-in-law had breast breast cancer and the breast was removed but her children refused that she will not take chemo chemo injection recommended for her saying it will cause more harm not be the first time they hear about chemo be this say 
na in the kill the patient pass even the sickness yes it... chemo has chemo has side effects that's the truth but um, based on studies it is still the best because without that chemo after removing the breast the breast in two to three years she might come back with a difficulty in breathing that cancer has spread to the lungs she may come back with uh, yellow eyes the cancer has spread to the, ki the liver so in order to take care of those cancer cells that are on their way to these vital organs chemotherapy is necessary and it also depends on the stage of the disease at which um, she was treated so it's important that it's something that can be discussed some some people react to chemo terribly and a few people actually have passed on from chemo but it's like the between the devil and the deep blue sea it's like okay the better of two evil but majority of the women 99 percent of the women will be able to go through chemotherapy safely though it can be challenging there will be hair loss vomiting and all that those are side effects but when they come through it and come out on the other side it's victory for them it's Shaq Ahmed Rufai, Salamu Alaikum, my ordinary president. My mom is suffering from this cancer and I don't know which one caused, which one caused, I don't know, which type maybe. She has been in the hospital since last week and it is not easy. She can't breathe well, nor eat, talk. Yeah, so well, what I'm just saying. Yeah. Continue, sir. So it's very common. If you ask all the women mm. that have breast cancer to come to this studio, there will be no space to take them. Mm -mm. I mean, in Abuja. Is it that rampant? Is that rampant? Is that rampant? Can husband has help his wife to check it? You asked me this question the last time I came here. I, you know, I've, this is not the first time I'm talking about breast cancer. I said I cannot trust the man. He will go and do his own thing in that place. Okay. So let the woman do it herself. Okay. <laughs> Doctor, why is it attacking more of the breast than other parts of the body? No, today we are talking about breast cancer. There are other cancers like cervical cancer. It's also common. Prostate cancer. I diagnosed two prostate cancers yesterday. Yes, so it's not... It's just because we are talking about breast today. Okay, but I'm talking about more of the women. Does it, in most cases, more rampant with those from the breast, not, not necessarily other parts of the body? Yes, we, uh, breast cancer is the commonest cancer. Yes. Why? Well, we, we don't know exactly why, but that's, that's what the statistics show. Babali uh, Kachal, I beg, I beg the ordinary president to make every friday as a medical awareness day only god knows how many people benefit from this awareness thank you my super ordinary president what do you have to say okay um just a quick one ordinary president i see they talk about how rampant it is even this morning we see not less than four persons in front in front of the, of the gate now yes with cancer city, yes breast cancer then they forget uh, now uh, i don't know whether they don't go and um as you uh, he was asking for cause you say you no no i don't know whether not meat or not truth we hear saying uh, women where they know they suck their breast nine they cause cancer no, but I've already said all the possible predis that uh, risk way factors. You, that, uh, any answer where you give us that day, mm. if we ask you today, that now because over 1 million or 2 million people, new people, when they, when no day that day, they listen to the program. Naim. No, I'm, talk I'm mm. saying I've already said the risk factors for breast cancer this morning. Mm. And sucking of breast is not among. Uh -huh. <laughs> now just uh, hey, now question <laughs> now question okay thank you for the question mm. so that's a myth but then they take and they deceive small small yes. young girl that's a myth it's uh, not correct you don't know so can, cancer fit uh, <laughs> yeah. yes so the uh, that was we were looking at the photograph the, the we next we, slide we were please. on the one of the nipple retraction mm. next 
Okay, so that, that's the nipple retraction. Yes, it's go inside. It's go inside. I just say they know malo. No, so that's that's one of the danger signs. If you see a nipple like this, you have to be sh you have to screen the woman because quickly it, it might be cancer that is there. Next slide. Okay, yes, this is another nipple retraction. You see, instead of the nipple pointing out, it's pointing in. Mm. Yes, it's this cancer that is dragging it in. Yes, the next one. So that's a dimple, very side, innocent looking. Mm. Yes, that if I see this, I'm worried because this might just be cancer that has not been diagnosed. If a woman sees this, it should immediately come to the hospital. Yes. Okay. Then that's bloody discharge from the nipple. It's also one of the signs. Next. So that's cancer in men, in a man, breast cancer in a man, but this one is advanced. So the, the, the man has the advantage because the breast is flat and is small. So any little change, he should be able to pick it. But men can be careless and they don't do anything about it. You and remember one time, way boil come over for my breast. Now lie, lie, you did lie. How do you help me? Well, that's I, that's medic. It's a confidential matter between uh, us. No, make people hear this one. <laughs> make people hear <laughs> that thing. Eh, I nearly die. <laughs> I know they feel sleep. I know they feel do anything. I know if it we if I wear clothes, clothes touch him. He go and I, I, I try say make I treat him by myself. Take this one, take that one. When I see, say I don't, they die. <laughs> eh, hey. I go even, <laughs> I go grind garlic, put on top. <laughs> Think you say garlic go shrink up. Now, so this thing wound me. When, when you come open mouth, when I depress them, see water, see water. Kai, now I call Dr. Otabo. First of all, I send them the video. <laughs> I say, Doctor, I say, oh, I say, I know well. Oh. <laughs> you say, what in the apple? I say, breast. Oh. Breast, eh. I send out the video, you see. Waiting person, no, no, you no, no. And he pass him. Tap, he give me one tablet for three days. The first day, I feel sleep. The second day, I sleep well, well. The third day, the, the thing don't dry. Make we appreciate Dr. Otabo. Mm-hmm.